Now, last weekend has seen the passing of one of China's most respected scientists, Chen Shui-sen. Known as the father of Chinese aerospace, Chen died at his home in Beijing just short of his 98th birthday. In today's BON feature, Neva Wyman explains how the long life story of this gifted academic also sheds light on the complex issue of Sino-US ties from more than half a century ago. Here at his home in western Beijing, ordinary Chinese people have been paying their respects to one of China's most extraordinary scientists, Chen Shui-sen. Their devotion doesn't only lie in the huge contribution he made to the country's aerospace and nuclear programs. Here in China, he's also seen as a patriot who chose to turn his back on prestige and fortune in the West for a much more uncertain future, helping the fledgling People's Republic of China in its hour of need. Professor Tian was one of the greatest and most patriotic scientists in China. We're in deep mourning at his passing. Professor Chen broke through many difficulties and came back to China. Among young students, he is remembered not only as a great scientist, but also as a patriotic man. In a life spanning almost a century, from the dying days of the Qing dynasty to China's manned conquest of space in the 21st century, Qian Shui-sen went from working for the U.S. military to developing China's aerospace and nuclear programs. Qian Shui-sen was born in eastern China's city of Hangzhou in 1911. He went to the U.S. in 1935 on a scholarship funded by the Chinese government. After a year at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, he moved to the California Institute of Technology, Caltech. During the Second World War, Qian helped design ballistic missiles for the U.S. And in 1945, as a U.S. Air Force colonel with security clearance, he was sent to Europe on a mission to examine captured rocket technology from Nazi Germany. He was involved in debriefing German rocket scientists, including Werner von Braun, who, ironically, was to become the acknowledged father of the U.S. space program. Chen Shui-sen even applied for U.S. citizenship in 1949, a fact little reported in China. But his eminent career came to an abrupt end when he was targeted by anti-communist investigators during the McCarthy witch hunt of the 1950s, and he was briefly arrested and lost his security clearance. Deportation procedures began in 1950, but Tian was not allowed to leave the U.S. as his knowledge was considered too sensitive. He eventually stopped fighting his expulsion and actively sought to return to China. After five years of virtual house arrest, Tian and his family were allowed to sail for China in 1955. Tian said at the time that he had no reason and no plan to return to the United States, and added that he would do his best to help the Chinese people build up a nation where they could live with dignity and happiness. Former U.S. Navy Secretary Dan Kimball later said that accusing Tian was the stupidest thing the U.S. ever did. Tian Shui-sen never returned to the United States. But for Chinese people, his decision to return home was based on patriotism and principles. He told me that he has never thought to stay abroad forever. Once there was a chance, he would come back to China. This was a decision he never hesitated to make. But America's loss was China's gain. Back in China, Tian worked for the Ministry of Defense, where he set up the country's first missile and rocket research institute, which later helped start China's space program. In 1956, an essay he wrote led to the establishment of the Commission of Aeronautical Industry and his research helped lead to the successful explosion of China's first atomic bomb in 1964, as well as to its first man-made satellite in 1970, and its first manned spacecraft, the Shenzhou 5, in 2003. During the turmoil of the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s, Tian was largely shielded from the persecution faced by many intellectuals. 
Tien Shui Sun retired in 1991, but remained an influence on his students. He told me that one should have principles and shouldn't swim with the tide because my father is a businessman. Businessmen in Chinese people's stereotyped minds easily forget principles. He instructed me to be a principled man. I think that was good for me. Chen Shui Sun traveled far during his long life, crossing the Pacific Ocean from China to the US and back again. Equally difficult was the roller coaster path, from lauded scientist to suspected spy to undisputed national hero. And these journeys are the reason why Chinese people are today mourning the passing of Tian Shui Sun, the scientist whose work helped China become the global power it is today, the hero they knew simply as the rocket man. Neva Wyman. B-O-N. Well, Mark, China of, um, also this summer has seen another passing of a great academic, um, the death of Professor of Ancient Language, Qi Xianlin, which we saw an outpouring of grief here in China. That's right, yeah, a similar outpouring now for, for the death of uh, Qian Shui Sun. Interesting, from the U.S. perspective, as we heard in the piece, uh, Dan Kimball, the former U.S. Naval Secretary, saying letting him slip out of, of, of U.S. hands, mm. as it were, letting him go back to China, um, was the stupidest move the U.S. ever made, just, uh, you know, recognition of quite how talented Chen Shui Sen was. The other thing about this, uh, we heard in the headlines that the top Chinese Air Force commander uh, called the militarization of space, now a historical inevitability. Of course, in the past, historically, uh, China's saying that space should only be used for peaceful purposes. So we are seeing, uh, you know, we are seeing a change there. And, of course, the space program right. here in China, very important both to the public, a lot of media attention when there's a subsequent, uh, every launching of a rocket and so on, huge media interest. Right, he made definitely a lot of changes. Yeah. Well, don't go anywhere. Question of the day is next.